One of the remarkable things about the atmosphere is that there's a current flowing all the way from the top of the atmosphere to the ground. And this is generated globally by thunderstorms and the current flows around the entire planet. And here at Reading we have some sampling plates which allow us to collect that current and measure it. So from measurements made in the 1920s on a ship, a sailing ship called the Carnegie, it was found that this current varied over the day like this. No matter where you were on the planet, with a minimum at about 3 o'clock in the morning UT and about uh, 19 hours UT, um, there was a maximum. So if you think of that happening on all days, really this means that there's a sort of heartbeat of atmospheric electricity which is running through every day um, as a result of the Carnegie curve. So we we're interested in whether this curve was actually present in clouds themselves. In other words, was there an effect of the current on the clouds through which they passed? And to do that, we need to go somewhere where there's very little in the way of other influences on the clouds. We went to the poles for that because in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, measurements are routinely made of the bases of clouds using lasers. They fire the light into the sky and measure how long it takes for the light to come back and therefore work out the height of the cloud. So we took the hourly measurements of cloud base height from these two sites and compared them with the Carnegie curve and we found that there was a variation that was very similar. So this illustrates really for the first time that there are changes in the clouds which are, we can associate with the Carnegie curve variations and the electrical currents that are flowing. Mm -hmm. 